Welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today is just a quick little tutorial and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the object info node. So to some of you, this might be a new thing. So you can see here, it's the object info node. I'm gonna go through it, how to set it up. But essentially, we can take one material. So instead of, you know, I have a whole bunch of different spheres here, as you can see but they're all just using one material and they're all different colors. And the reason we can make that work is because we're using the object info node and we're using the random here on a color ramp to mix the colors around. So I'm gonna quickly go through that. It's only a really quick tutorial, but it is a lot of useful applications for this because it allows us to add different um, colors to different objects, multiple different objects, but only work with one material in and of itself, which gives us the ability to quickly make adjustments like roughness or sheen or whatever like that, but we're only working with one material and this object info is making the randomized color for us. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about the rest of these here because we're just focusing on using the random here for color differences. Like I said, these are all completely different objects, but one material. So let's get into it, I'll quickly explain. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using the Blender default startup file. So just simply open up Blender and let's just go over to our renderer and we're gonna be working in cycles. So go to render engine and just make that cycles, okay? So um, what we're gonna do now also is just select um, the, the cube here and let's just give it a subdivision surface modifier. Um, you don't have to do this, I just prefer to do that just to smooth it out a bit. Just give a few here, go to object and then just enable shade smooths. Now we have that and we have a camera. Now let's just grab Let's just go shift A and let's just add in a proper light. So just add in an area light real quick. Um, doesn't really matter because that's not what the tutorial is about. So just maybe give it a bit more power under the light settings and maybe just a bit more size. And you know, if you hit Z and you go render it, you can see we can now see our um, ball there. So just you know, mess around with those settings. So now we can get into the shader itself. So let's select the ball here. Now let's just go over to our shading workspace. And um, once again, just hit Z, go into render it. Now you can see here, um, what we want to do is we have an object and it has a material, right? You can see it has a material here, but the problem is um, if you come here to the base color and let's just change it to orange, for example, right? Um, that's one material. So what if I went shift D to duplicate this um, ball here? Right? And then went shift D again, let's just make like four of them. Well, they're all orange at the moment. And you know, we could go ahead and select these and give them separate materials, but we want to use one material and have different colors. So how do you do that amongst different objects? So that's where the info node comes in. So let's go shift A, search, and it's a very simple node. All we're gonna type in is object info and just get the object info. And the one we're gonna be looking at, there's a lot of things here, but the only one we're focused on today is the one here for the color, that's the random. So we're gonna plug the random into the base color here. And all of a sudden you can see we have these different um, shades of it here, right? Now it's using the gray scale at the moment. That's why some are black, some are white, some are gray in between. But uh, what we can do with that is we can use that um, with a color ramp. So let's go shift a search and let's just type in color and let's get a color ramp and let's place this color ramp over here on this cable. Now we can come in here and we can use these values. So for example, if I grab the black value here, which is this guy here, what if I wanted that to be orange? So I'm gonna drag the value up and I'll make that orange. I guess now I can take this lighter value, you can kind of see it's doing this random gradient. So some are fully white, some are in between, and some are orange, some are kind of more like a peach. But what you can do is you can come and click on a plus and add in more tabs, click on the color bar and change the colors. Now we can add some pink in there, right? Maybe we can grab this white bar and end, let's make that yellow. And what you can do, at the moment it's set to linear, um, if you want it to, to be more pastel, more blended, you can always set it to B-spline, which is a lot softer. But what I like to do is just go to constant. That's usually what I work with. Now you can slide these around. You can click plus, add in more tabs, add in different colors. And the more you duplicate this ball now, you go shift D, just duplicate this object, you know. The, the more you can add tabs in here, drag them around, add in different colors. You know, you can see there we add some purple, Maybe add in you know, a little bit of blue like that. And now we're just dealing with one material. Keep in mind, this is one material. So if we come down to the principal shader, we make this a bit more glossy by bringing the roughness down. It happens to all of them. We're just dealing with one material, but it's working across multiple objects and giving them all a random color, which can be very useful 
for a lot of different applications. So you don't have to make a whole bunch of materials and you only have to work kind of with one main node setup. Um, only thing that is a downside here, if I grab one of these objects and I went into edit mode and I just went shift D to duplicate inside of edit mode, right? If I tab out and I go Z, I go rendered, well, they're not different colors because that's still one object, okay? Um, these are different objects. If we go into object mode and we grab them, we can see they're all different objects. So if that ever happens and you want to separate objects, just go into edit mode, hit A to select them, and if they're all separate meshes, you can just hit P and go separate by loose parts. And now if we tab out, you can see that these are their own objects. So that is a very, very basic um, introduction to using the object info node to randomize colors in Blender. Um, very simple, and that's all I wanted to show you guys today. I hope you're able to make use of this in your Blender workflow, and I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.